So this is the first of five modules that we're going to use to cover the topics of seizures and epilepsy. And in this first module, we're going to discuss how the electroencephalogram or the EEG works. So to begin, we actually have to go back in history. And this is a picture of Dr. Hans Berger, a famous German physiologist who was actually the discoverer of the EEG. Now you need to understand that in the early part of the 20th century, no one had any mechanism for actually directly measuring the activity of the human cortex. Berger figured out that if you could place electrodes on the surface of the scalp, and these, this is actually the very first EEG uh, machine or device that, that, uh, that he created, that these electrodes placed in different places along the scalp were capable of actually recording the electrical activity of the underlying human cortex. Now, this is a more modern rendition of the EEG showing where electrodes are placed. And here on the right side of the slide is the actual first human EEG ever recorded, these two top traces. And below are subsequent EEG traces that Dr. Berger published in manuscripts in the 1920s. So the question is, how is it that electrodes that are placed on the surface of the scalp are able to actually pick up the electrical activity of the underlying cortex? Now in this slide, I'm going to walk you through the way the EEG works. So let's start by first of all looking at the fact that here I've drawn in uh, six neurons. There are actually two ensembles of neurons. Here's a group of three, and here's another group of three. And as you can see, these are meant to be large pyramidal neurons or projection neurons that have their axons actually coursing in uh, towards the brain here. And then their dendrites are all oriented in a similar fashion up towards the surface of the cortex. And on top of the cortex, I've placed two EEG electrodes. Now, in the typical EEG, these electrodes would be up at the scalp. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll just place them here. Now, also notice that on the ensemble on the left, the axons that are coming in from the thalamus make their synaptic contact in the relative proximal part of the dendrites. And this is in contrast to axons that are coming from the other side of the brain, which are making their contacts in the more distal aspects of the dendrites. So, with regard to the cellular basis of the EEG, the first concept or the first property that's important to understand is that the large projection neurons in the cortex have a similar orientation, right? So you can see that the dendrites are all oriented up towards the cortex. All right, so now let's consider what happens when electrical activity comes in and uh, causes a change in the excitation of these pyramidal neurons. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the activity of an action potential. So here's the action potential shown here, and it's coming in from the underlying thalamus. And as that action potential moves towards the synapse and makes a, uh, makes a signal, we're going to call that an excitatory postsynaptic potential, which actually you've learned about already in brain-mind behavior. When that EPSP makes its connection with the synapse, there's actually movement of ions from the outside uh, of the cell in and, of course, in reverse. And in this case, let's follow a positively charged ion, or sodium, as it goes in towards the dendrite. This movement of charge creates a sink. And if you think back to basic electricity, wherever there's a sink, there's a source. And so now you have current flow that, in this case, is moving from the more distal dendrite into the more proximal dendrite. And so these inputs, or EPSPs, cause flow of ions, and they produce a current sink and a current source. It's when there is a summation of this activity all at once that you get the, uh, the ability to detect this, the, uh, the electrical signals from the scalp electrodes. And this is shown here. So as you see this movement of current, the electrode is actually picking up a relative positive charge close to the electrode. And that's why you see the waveform, which is going downward and represents a positive charge. Now, this all depends on the orientation and the timing of the inputs, but we can look on the other side, and you can imagine here, I'm showing the EPSPs striking the more distal dendrite all at once. Again, it's going to create a sink and a source, and in this case, the EEG electrode is going to be picking up relative negative charge, and you see the upward movement 
of the waveform. Okay, so there you have it. It's the fact that the large projection neurons in the cortex have a similar orientation, that the inputs cause this flow of ions, this sink and source, and it's the summation of large numbers of, uh, of these inputs that create a detectable change in voltage at the surface of the scalp. Okay, so now that we have an understanding of the basis, the cellular basis of the EEG, let's take a look at a real EEG. So here you go, here's a real EEG. And um, to orient you, in this lower part of the slide is a so-called EEG montage. Each of the circles here represents an electrode and we're looking down at the top of a person's head. So you can see all these electrodes. And in this particular EEG, the tracings are based on pairs of electrodes that are oriented from the front to the back on the left and the front to the back on the right. So for example, EEG trace number one represents the pair of electrodes on the front left part of the brain. Trace number two is the next pair back and so forth. So now, let's take a look at these tracings and, and what do you see? Well, I'll tell you, for example, these kinds of things here, these little spiky things, those are, that's actually artifacts, so don't pay any attention to that. But, but otherwise, you can see that the tracings, for the most part, look pretty chaotic. Kind of different frequencies, fairly low voltage, and this is, this is the normal activity that's picked up with an EEG. But let's focus in actually on one spot. Let's, let's look at tracing number four, where you see activity that sort of is kind of random frequency here, then lower voltage here, and then increased voltage and a more regular frequency uh, in this part. So this tracing number four is in, it represents this pair of electrodes in the back left part of the brain. And if you follow this along, you can see this, this shift from here to here. And what's, what's the difference? Well, actually the difference is in this part of the recording, the patient is sitting there with his eyes open. And at this point, the patient is with eyes closed, and you can see the production of what's called an alpha rhythm, actually a rhythm that's about 10 hertz or 10 per second. And this is what happens normally whenever any of us close our eyes. The back part of the brain, the occipital lobe, actually shifts into a different frequency or different pattern called the alpha rhythm. And this is just, actually, if you, let's also take a look here. Down in electrode eight, you can see the, the uh, sorry, in tracing eight, you can see the same type of pattern. And of course, that represents the analogous pair in the back part of the right occipital lobe. So this is just a very nice example of how the EEG has the ability to pick up electrical signals from throughout the surface of the cortex. And can, you can see different frequencies depending on the function of that part of the cortex. Now, with this in mind then, let's look at an EEG uh, that was taken while a person was having a seizure. And again, here's the montage. The orientation is the same from the front to the back, front to the back on the left and the right. And here you can notice that there's much more sort of synchronized and rhythmic activity, at least across a number of these traces, one and two, four and five and six and so forth. And if you look closely at these traces, what do you see? Actually, you see large amplitude, high voltage, what we call spiking activity. So here the EEG appears to be picking up activity from large groups of neurons in the underlying cortex that are giving rise to this high voltage, high amplitude spiking activity. And this is the signature of an electrographic seizure. So in the next module, we're going to explore further what the cellular basis is of this type of seizure activity that's detected by the EEG.